Welcome to Neutralization in Salts. We've talked about acids and bases so far, and we know some things about them. We know acids have a very low pH and bases have a high pH. We also know that acids are related to the H plus ion, and bases in general we relate to the OH minus ion. But in this lesson, we're going to look at what happens when we combine acids and bases together. And we're also going to take a look at how salts are related to acids and bases. So let's start by talking about a common acid, hydrochloric acid. This is a common strong acid, and it's even found in your stomach. But sometimes you can build up too much hydrochloric acid in your stomach, and it becomes overly acidic. When that happens, we call it acid indigestion. And you could experience symptoms of acid indigestion, like heartburn or nausea. And those are generally unpleasant symptoms. So in general, to alleviate those, you take something called an antacid. And these antacids contain certain compounds, things like MgOH2, magnesium hydroxide. And the reason this works and helps the acid indigestion is that MgOH2 and compounds like it are bases. So this base, or bases like it, would react with the hydrochloric acid in your stomach to alleviate those symptoms. And that reaction between the acid and the base, we call that neutralization, or acid-base neutralization. So let's see what's happening with the reaction between hydrochloric acid and the MgOH2. When these react together, I end up with a salt, MgCl2, and water molecules. If I go through and balance it, I'll see I have two HCLs and two waters. So let's try and take a closer look at what's happening here. We could think of H2O as HOH. And if we think about it like that, it's kind of easy to see where the water molecule came from. The hydrogen from the hydrochloric acid and the hydroxide from the magnesium hydroxide combine to form water. So that explains where this H2O comes from. The two hydrogens and the two hydroxides give me two waters. If we now look at the MgCl2, this is a salt, magnesium chloride. And salts are ionic compounds. They're made up of ions. So this MgCl2 is made up of magnesium ions and chloride ions. And the magnesium ions came from magnesium oxide. And the chloride ions were what was left over when the HCl gave away its H. So in addition to forming water molecules, when an acid and base combine, we get this salt substance. And the cation, or the positive ion, is always from the base. Whereas the anion, the negative ion, is always coming from the acid. And when the anion and cation combine, we call it a salt, an ionic compound. Let's look at another example of a neutralization reaction. We'll take hydrochloric acid again, and we'll combine it with another very common strong base, NaOH. And now we can sort of walk through, based on what we just saw with the previous reaction, we can walk through and see what our products are going to be. So these two are going to react. We know the H and the OH are going to form water. And one H and one OH will form one water. And for the salt, we can see that we have a chloride ion and a sodium ion. So that's going to give us sodium chloride, which is simply table salt. So the first major thing we can take away from this is that a neutralization reaction is always an acid plus a base forming salt and water. This is the general form for any neutralization reaction. Now in cases where I have a strong acid, such as this one, and a strong base, if I have sufficient amounts of each of these acid and base substances, meaning I have enough NaOH that I can use up all the HCl that's present and completely carry out the neutralization reaction, I can say that this has been neutralized or that it's reached something called the equivalence point. And this concept of the equivalence point, where enough acid or base has been added to completely use up all the reactants, that's going to be really important for when we do titrations in the lab. And the reason it's important is that for when we have a strong acid and a strong base, when they reach that equivalence point, the pH is neutral. But this is only true for a strong base reacting with a strong acid. That wraps up our lesson on neutralization of acids and bases. We're now going to take a closer look at the role of salts and how the salts are made and what their effect is on the pH of the solution after the neutralization has occurred. So we just looked at this HCl plus NaOH reaction. What we're going to answer now is why the pH is neutral when we have a neutralization reaction between a strong acid and a strong base.
and it has something to do with the salt. The NaCl is going to be the important factor here. So to understand what's happening here, we have a key idea that we're going to pay attention to for the remainder of this lesson. And that's that the stronger an acid or base is, the weaker its conjugate is. And remember the conjugate is essentially what's formed or what's left over after the reaction is proceeded with an acid or a base. So when HCl gives H plus into solution and leaves Cl minus behind, Cl minus is a conjugate. And in this case, it's the conjugate base because it came from an acid. So now let's take a look at the same reaction before and we'll consider what's happening with both the acid and the base in solution. So our acid is HCl, and we know that HCl in solution dissociates into H plus and Cl minus ions. That makes the Cl minus the conjugate base. We can do the same thing for NaOH, which is our base, and we can see that it dissociates in solution into Na plus ions and hydroxide ions. And for this, it's the Na plus ion that's the conjugate. And this conjugate came from the base, so this is a conjugate acid. Now let's think about the key idea we just saw. The stronger an acid or base is, the weaker the conjugate will be. Now HCl is a strong acid, a very strong acid. And the base, NaOH, is a very strong base. That means these conjugates are going to be very, very weak. And in fact, there are some nice rules of thumb for dealing with conjugate pairs. And these four rules of thumb come from that one key idea we looked at. But we're going to apply the first two to this situation. So the first one is that the conjugate base of a strong acid is so weak that it's basically neutral. So for this reaction, that means our conjugate of our strong acid, the conjugate base of our strong acid, is neutral. So Cl minus is effectively neutral. Our second rule says that the conjugate acid of a strong base is also neutral. It's so weak that it's practically neutral. So that's going to be our Na plus, our conjugate acid of our strong base. So the Na plus ion is basically neutral. It's such a weak acid that it's basically neutral. So what's going on here? Well, when Na plus and Cl minus combine to make NaCl, we have two ions that are both essentially neutral, making a salt. That means this salt is a neutral salt. When it's in solution, the NaCl doesn't cause a change in pH. It's a neutral substance. So that's pretty straightforward. Strong acid, strong base, they result in a neutral salt. But it gets more interesting when we look at the neutralization of weak acids and weak bases. So first, let's look at the reaction of a strong base, NaOH, with a weak acid, acetic acid. When these react together, we get sodium acetate plus water, because an acid and a base always gives us a salt and water. But what we're really interested about is the salt. We want to know what kind of salt this is. So let's break it up. We know that it has Na+, and we know that it's also made of acetate, the acetate ion. Now the sodium ion we can evaluate right away because we already said that the conjugate of a strong base is essentially neutral. So this one is neutral. It's the conjugate acid from a strong base. Now let's look at the other one though. We no longer have a strong acid. So the conjugate base, this is the conjugate base, is not going to be so weak that we consider it neutral. So our third rule of thumb here is that the conjugate base of a weak acid is a base. So this ion is basic. It's going to result in a pH higher than 7. So this salt, sodium acetate, is a basic salt. It's a salt that when dissolved in water creates a basic solution. The next example we'll look at is the opposite. We now have a weak base. We should recognize ammonia as a weak base. And hydrochloric acid is definitely a strong acid. When these react, we get the salt ammonium chloride. And we could split this up also to see that it's made of the ammonium ion, NH4+, and the Cl- ion. We should recognize the Cl- ion as coming from the strong acid. So this is the conjugate base. And as we saw before, the conjugate base of a strong acid is so weak that it's essentially neutral. We now have to consider the NH4+. This came from a weak base, so it's the conjugate acid. And the fourth rule of thumb that we're going to see here, that's based off that original key idea, is that the conjugate acid of a weak base is an acid. So this has some acidity. 
So what does that tell us about the salt made from these two ions? Well, an acidic ion and a neutral ion means that this salt, ammonium chloride, in solution is going to have a pH less than 7. It's going to result in an acidic solution. So to recap what we just saw, a neutralization reaction between a weak base and a strong acid results in an acidic solution, pH less than 7, and a neutralization reaction between a strong base and a weak acid gave us a pH greater than 7. This is very different from the case with a strong acid and strong base together because that means when the equivalence point is reached for each of these reactions when all of the reactants have been used up it will not be neutral and that's a weird statement to get around to say that when a strong base is completely neutralized by a weak acid it's not actually a neutral pH the pH is not 7 when a strong base is completely neutralized by a weak acid the pH is actually greater than 7 because of the salt present. So remembering this is really important for titrations that deal with weak acids and weak bases. In those cases, the equivalence point does not mean that you have a neutral pH.